Hi everybody, I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, uh, which is gonna be a very sort of short video, we're going to introduce a very important uh, distribution that we're gonna be using as we begin our study of hypothesis testing. So this video is gonna just briefly introduce you guys to what is called the T distribution, and then in the next set of videos, we'll actually see how to start carrying out our first type of hypothesis testing and how to use this T distribution. But I do wanna just give you guys a little bit of background about this before we start to use it in the next set of videos. So the T distribution. So the T distribution is another important statistical distribution. And in, in a lot of ways, it's actually pretty similar to the normal distribution. And as we'll see, it actually has a direct relationship to the normal distribution. But before we do that, let's talk about some important facts about the T distribution. First, the T distribution is symmetric and roughly bell shaped. So in a lot of ways, visually, the T distribution looks similar to the normal distribution. It is symmetric, so both sides, both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the distribution look the same, and it also still has a rough bell shape uh, to it. So it'll look pretty similar to the normal distribution. Second, the T distribution is a three-parameter distribution. What that means is that to fully describe a T distribution, you need to say three things. You have to know its mean, its standard deviation, and this concept called its degrees of freedom. So this is one of the first moments where the t-distribution is a little bit different than the normal distribution. Remember, the normal distribution, you only need to know the mean and the standard deviation to completely define the distribution. For the t-distribution, you have to know the mean, the standard deviation, and the degrees of freedom. So it has three different parameters that you need to know to describe that distribution. That means that there's a bunch of different t-distributions for different degrees of freedoms. So in a lot of times, you'll hear the t-distribution referenced as a family of distributions because there's a different t-distribution for every degree of freedom. Okay, the third fact, this is again sort of a comparison between the t-distribution and the normal distribution. The t-distribution is more spread out. In other words, it has more variation than the normal distribution. This means that visually, the tails of a T distribution are larger than the tails of a normal distribution, meaning that there is more data further away from the middle than there would be in a standard normal distribution. All right, the fourth and final fact sort of directly established the relationship between the T distribution and the normal distribution. This says that as the degrees of freedom in a T distribution increase, so as this third parameter here gets larger and larger, the T distribution becomes more and more similar to the normal distribution. In fact, mathematically, not that it's important for our class, but if you're interested in some of the behind the scenes stuff, mathematically, the normal distribution can actually be thought of as the T distribution with an infinite degrees of freedom. So actually, if you were allowing this degrees of freedom to increase all the way to infinity, well, that would actually give you the normal distribution. Okay, so some of these facts are a little, might be a little out there, just like when we sort of gave the big facts about the normal distribution, it might help to sort of have a visualization of these. So let's go ahead and do a quick visualization of these facts. So what this basically means is if you were to draw a T distribution, your drawing would sort of change depending on your degrees of freedom. So let's imagine, right, we draw a sort of curve like that. Now you'll notice that I'm sort of intentionally drawing, and again, I'll put my little axes down here. Uh, you'll notice that I'm sort of intentionally drawing something that does look roughly bell-shaped, but it's a lot lower in the middle and its tails are a lot larger than they would normally be. This might be a T distribution. Again, I'm just sort of drawing it by hand. This might be a T distribution with a degrees of freedom of like five. So like a relatively low degrees of freedom. If you increase that and you did say the T distribution with maybe degrees of freedom 10 or something, what would happen is it would begin to look more like our standard bell shape. And it would start to have a larger middle and smaller tails. If we did that again, right, and this guy might be the T distribution with like degrees of freedom equal to 10. If we did it again, maybe we increase the degrees of freedom even more, right? What would happen is it would become more and more like the standard normal distribution. So this might be the T distribution with degrees of freedom 
equal to 100. So as you start to do this, right, as you increase those degrees of freedom, your curve is going to initially start as sort of this low with large tails, and then it's gonna become more and more like the standard sort of bell shape until eventually it would become the almost exactly normal distribution. So that's what these sort of facts are really saying. The big idea here though, is as those degrees of freedom goes up, right, it becomes more and more normal and the tails get smaller and smaller, more of the area is in the center. Okay, at this point, there's probably one large question remaining, which is why are we even taking the time to talk about the T distribution right now? Well, as we'll see, when we get to our first type of hypothesis testing in the next video, we're going to need to make use of this T distribution. And we're gonna talk about why we need to use it, uh, use this t-distribution again in the next video, but I wanna give you guys sort of a heads up since we have all these facts right here. So we're gonna be using the t-distribution whenever we're working with quantitative data. So whenever we have quantitative data and we're applying a hypothesis test, we're gonna to need to use this t-distribution. And the reason is, is that we have to account for the fact that we do not have access to the population standard deviation, right? When we're doing a sort of sample, we're not going to have access to the population standard deviation, right? We talked way back in our course that we really never get access to things that are for the population. So when we're working with quantitative data, we cannot expect that we're gonna have the population standard deviation. All we're going to have is the sample standard deviation. However, when we discussed the sampling distribution just a few videos ago, right, when we talked about that distribution of the samples, we assumed we had the population standard deviation. But in reality, this will not be the case. So in other words, when we did our sort of background work, when we set up that sampling distribution, we said, assume you have the population standard deviation. But in real life, you won't have the population standard deviation. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're going to need to estimate the population standard deviation using the sample standard deviation. Unfortunately, that's gonna introduce extra variation. But luckily, that extra variation is exactly accounted for by using the t-distribution. So the t-distribution accounts for the extra variation from using a sample standard deviation as an estimate of the population standard deviation. And that should make some sense because what did we just say? Well, we said that the T distribution is more spread out. In other words, it accounts for the fact that we're estimating the population standard deviation with the sample standard deviation. Obviously also it makes sense that as you have more and more data, you have a larger and larger degrees of freedom, that extra estimation is less and less because your estimate is a better and better estimate, which is why as the degrees of freedom sort of increase, the curve becomes more and more like a normal distribution. So basically the big takeaway from this is that when we're working with quantitative data, which we will be for the next few uh, lectures and the next few sort of hypothesis tests, we're gonna be working with quantitative data, we're gonna need to use this T distribution. That also means in the next video, when we lay out that our first hypothesis test, there'll be a T test statistic that we'll be calculating, and we will be referencing a new statistical table, table C, that tells us properties of this T distribution. So this video is just to sort of introduce you to that so that when we're in the next video and we're talking about the T distribution and the T test statistic, you know what that's in reference to. The big takeaways here is that the T distribution is very similar to the normal distribution. It's just a bit more spread out and it's essential because when we're working with actual data, we have to estimate the population standard deviation using the sample standard deviation. In the next video, we'll actually see how to make use of this with our very first hypothesis test.